Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis here, as always, with Sarah Powers. Hey, Sarah. Hey, Megan. And we are doing another More Than Mom. It's not even really an hour. No. It's a More Than Mom episode, which we are keeping at about 30 minutes or less. These purely are casual, fun. purely fun, casual. We don't really plan them. I'm in charge, so they're totally unorganized. <laughs> and these are the episodes where we just talk about whatever's on our mind. Yeah. And it's... this week, we are talking about the beverages of our lives. That sounds like it needs like um like a background theme song do, to go do, with it. Do, do, do. I think that was, I think that was the days of our lives theme we, song. We will not be doing TV jingles because do, Sarah do, would do, fail do, that. Do, 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 do. I think that was the days of our lives jingle, but can that we, might have been all my children. Can we just say real quick that I am recording in my vehicle outside? You can say that. Yeah, because this is the more than mom. We keep it casual. If this is your first time listening to our show, guys, go listen to a regular episode. These are like the fun bonuses. Um, You should listen to this too. But I am outside my kid's Taekwondo studio in a parking lot, like in full view of people who can see me holding a mic in a minivan right now. That's awesome. I love that so much. And we are all, this is relaxation time. We're we're recording a lot later than we usually would. Yep. Um, My daughter has commandeered my phone and is using it to stream full house in the other room. And as soon as I'm done here, I'll go join her again for another episode. But um, let's jump in because what we are talking about today is literally beverages. I love because it. Because this is how granular and stupid we get with these topics. <laughs> um, I, I have a list of questions to ask Sarah. I am a little more organized than usual because I really want to know some things about the beverages of Sarah's life. And then I'll talk a little bit about the beverages of my life. I love it. I can't wait. And this is something that I do. I feel like I have strong opinions about. So I'm really excited. And I have not looked at your list of questions. Good. But first, we're going to talk about our wonderful sponsor we love so much for this More Than Mom series is Kind Snacks. Kind is the kind of the just for mom snack in your house and in mine, Megan. I have to say, I used my last, I used, I ate my last Kind bar out of the Kind <laughs> snack, like the snack bin the other day in the pantry. Yeah. And I texted you. I was like, this is not OK. But, but how do you keep those in the snack bin and not have the kids? Do they just know it's yours? So the flavor I was on for a while, the vanilla sea salt caramel, I mean, I think they liked it, but they didn't love it as much as some of the other flavors sure. that they would have stolen. It wasn't so, like a kid steal yeah, flavor. Exactly. Yeah. So, but speaking of flavors, I'm part of the Kind Snack Club. And I just switched up my flavors to the Kind Healthy Grains Bar Variety Pack, which is on its way to me. So, guys, the way this works, I know you've seen Kind Bars and heard us talk about them, but the way the Snack Club works is you can pick your flavor and get monthly snacks at a discount. Um, And to get started with the Kind Snack Club, you get a variety pack. That's the really fun part. And they ship it to you for free. All you do is pay shipping. Um, And then in that variety pack is 10 full-size Kind Bars in different flavors, flavors you've never even seen at the grocery store. So that's really fun. And then if you're into it, you can get started with the Kind Snack Club, which is where they'll send you monthly snacks at a discount. And that's what I do, and that's why I will no longer be empty pantried I think like by tomorrow you are you are bar secure I, I, I yeah but right now I'm not but I need to <laughs> right be. now you're not and it's, it's not a good feeling is <laughs> yes, it no. well if you guys also want to be bar secure um, you can pick up your free sample box and maybe join that club go to kindsnacks.com slash mom that's kindsnacks.com slash m-o-m for full details and again all you do is pay shipping and you get 10 full-size kind bars for free and hide them so from it. your kids hide them from your kids all right, we ready to get into this? Yeah, but I'm not okay. looking. I'm closing okay. the outline. Don't, are, do you promise? Because I feel like you're one of those people who probably likes spoilers. Um, yeah, but I also like to follow the rules. So now that <laughs> okay. you told me that I'm not supposed to look, <laughs> okay, I closed right. it out. Okay, so we're gonna do this chronologically. Okay? okay, I want you to tell me what your favorite beverage was when you were a kid, and by kid I mean anything from as early as you can remember, like you know past breast milk or formula uh, <laughs> up till say like 11. Okay. Um, okay. I'll try and be quick. Um, I 
was never a thirsty kid, which is weird. I, I don't okay. remember like, like I don't remember always wanting a drink by me. And that came into play later because I have to really tell myself to drink water. So first of all, I don't remember loving beverages or like wanting a lot of beverages. I loved orange juice. I drank a lot of orange juice. I did not like milk. Um, soda was like a treat if we were out. And I never got into what I would have called any of the brown sodas or pops. Like I did not like root beer as a kid or Coke. I yeah. did like Sprite and I did like orange, like that terrible orange soda. Um, we wouldn't have bought those yeah. things at home, but it would have been like a fun treat if we were out to pizza or whatever. Sure. Um, so I think that is pretty boring. I remember my mom not buying Capri Suns, like not sending. I, we Actually, I do remember. Oh, those juice. were so covetable too. They Capri were. Suns. And I just had two lunchtime memories. One was my mom did send a juice box, but it was the Minute Maid orange juice in a bag lunch, which gets like real lukewarm, kind of gross. Um, oh, yeah. But do you yes. remember also the twist top? Um, like the, they were like shaped like an old Coke bottle, but plastic. And it was a, some kind of a juice or fruit punch inside and you twist it off the top. Did they, did you, did they have those for you when you were little? Do you mean it was like you literally twisted the entire top off? Yes. It yes, was like a I plastic that. twist thing. And yep. it wasn't a cap. It was not a circular cap. It was like. No, those were like, those were like cheap yes. early juice boxes kind of, but not. Right. Well, these, I think the ones that I'm thinking of were like even more high sugar, like worse than, oh, so okay. I would not have been allowed to have those. <laughs> there was no. There was actually no juice in them. Right. It was coloring it was sugar and colored water. Sugar. Um, and yeah. then I guess like if I have a fond memory, I do. My mom makes really good hot chocolate from scratch, like where mm. she on the stove with like whole milk and yeah. unsweetened cocoa and then adding the sugar. Like so. And I just remember that being really special because it felt like it took forever to make and like make right. sure the milk didn't burn. And that would have been like a Christmas thing. But like from an everyday drink, I don't think I even would have said I had a favorite. I didn't. Uh, yeah. I mean, I did like orange juice a lot. I'm going to go with orange juice. Yeah. I was a big apple juice drinker and okay. I did not like soda. I oh, remember okay. the first time I choked down a grape soda at my neighbor Bobby Joe's house <laughs> sitting under her picnic table out front. I'll never forget that. We had like um, a blanket over it. We made kind of like a fort. Okay. And she brought pop, as I called it in those days, right. in. And one of them was an orange soda. And I said, no thanks. Or a uh, grape. And I said, no thanks. I don't like pop and she said what do you mean you don't like what do you mean you don't like pop <laughs> and I said it hurts my tongue and she's like you're gonna drink this pop I had a lot of friends who were kind of mean but anyway um <laughs> I did drink it and I it was my first pop and I had to have been at least nine I mean I was old and I was like well I guess that wasn't so bad um but I was I really loved milk okay and why I just liked white milk mm -hmm. um in those days they didn't serve chocolate milk in the lunchroom I don't believe do you remember the smell of a carton of white milk. Uh, it's got do, a very particular yeah. smell. Yeah, it, but because I didn't really like milk as a kid, I don't know that I was as intimate with it, but yeah. I do know what you mean. It's yeah. like you open, it's something about the smell of the carton. It's like a plat, like a papery kind of gross smell. Yes, um, yes. But, but I like, like I have almost like a fond memory of that. So I liked milk and I loved tea. I got really into oh, tea. You've always loved when, tea. Yes, I have since I was a little kid and I got really into it because uh, my mom and I would go to coffee hour at church uh -huh. pretty much every time they had it. And I want to say they had it every Sunday and she would like, always, she would limit how many s sweets I could have because those things were just a smorgasbord of sweets. Right. right. But I was allowed to have as much tea as I wanted. And I kind of figured out that I could put as much sugar in my tea. Yeah. <laughs> As I wanted and like no one would really stop me. Um, but I, I was, you know, like a snob even early on about what kind of creamer I'd put in my tea. I would never use like the white powdered creamer. Right. I would only use like whole milk or half and half. And I was very particular about that. That's so really cute. So that was me as a kid. OK, now we're going to move on to teenager. OK, when you were a teenager and I'm and by teenager, I'm going to define that as like 12 to 17 because okay. I'm going to young adult. I'm going right. to give a different. OK, you know. So just what was my favorite or any, just yeah. any beverage memories? Well, both either. Okay. This um, is more than mom. We can do what we want. Okay. Yeah. And I didn't have time to prepare so I can go wherever I want with this. Okay. Well, I will tell one quick story. Um, it's most of this is going to involve coffee. I didn't drink a lot of coffee as a teenager, but I feel like my strong memories involve coffee or coffee drinks. So the coffee bean and tea leaf, which is a coffee chain that's everywhere now. Do they have it in the Midwest? Nope. 
Nope. Okay, so it's not everywhere. It's just in the West. But <laughs> when I was there, when I was in Arizona, they had it there. So I, it, it's not just California. But I think it, I think it started in LA. And even before Starbucks came to where I lived, a couple of years before that, there was a coffee bean and tea leaf downtown, and they made this glorious thing called an iced blended mocha. And this is before coffee house culture lattes, mochas. Yeah. Like I was gonna say, that's early. This is we like ninety one, like ninety two. Yeah, like ninety one, ninety two. So this is pre most coffee craze. Um, and it was to me the most delicious thing ever. I mean, it would be a frappuccino now. That's what you would call it at Starbucks. So it was a little bit of coffee, a kind of a chocolate powder. And then with ice, blended, really fine blend, like an icy, like that, you know, like the, the consistency of an icy, um, but like a chocolate with a little bit of coffee and then whipped cream on top. And so that to me mm. was like the most delicious and also felt slightly grown up because it was a coffee drink. I mean, it did not have very much coffee in it. Yeah. And so that coffee bean and tea leaf went in, I think when I was about 12. Um, and so that would be like downtown with my friends hanging out at the outdoor, it's like a mall, but not an indoor mall, like to hanging out downtown, mm. that would be what we would get. So I have strong memories of that. Um, I don't, again, I was not a soda drinker and I was not a, didn't really like get into Gatorade. I don't know what I drank every day as a teenager. But can I tell my other coffee related story? You absolutely real quick? can. Okay. Yeah. So fast forward to when I'm like 16 or maybe 17, there was a Starbucks in um, a couple of Starbucks in town by then because it's like 96, 97. And I drove to high school every day. I drove my friend Nicole, who was younger than me, and I got in the habit of stopping at Starbucks like kind of often, which again, just like now it's like expensive to buy and I would get a mocha this time a hot cafe mocha but still chocolate and coffee together and pretty soon by the end of my junior year I like had a pretty good caffeine not addiction but like I I was used to it in the mornings right and then my choir my high school choir or magical group went to England um, for 10 days right after the end of my junior year and um, there's no Starbucks there, but I had <laughs> recently. The horror. There is now. There is now. But at the time. Um, right. And we were staying in these. American like, little... culture hadn't permeated yeah. that hard exactly. in that way. And yet. Yes. We were a bunch of high school kids staying in these hotels or hostels even. I think they were hotel, like little hotels. So I, my, I was like pretty caffeine dependent by this point. I had given myself a daily habit. And so that trip to England is when I became a daily regular coffee drinker where I didn't need chocolate and whipped cream and all that. I just put a little milk and a little sweetener. And when I came home from England, I just told my parents, like, brew another cup in the pot. Like, I'm a coffee drinker now. Oh, I wonder what they thought about that. I think. I mean, I was, I think, 17. So it wasn't like... But I have to say, it freaks me out when I see my kids drinking coffee, even my adult kids. It's just like... Yeah, I don't know why. Because I'm not a coffee drinker, I guess. I know, but I didn't have any caffeinated soda. And I feel like at the time, I think maybe we know more about... But I don't... I wasn't having, like caffeine all day like crazy amounts of well, caffeine I was don't just get having, me wrong yeah. I don't care that my kids drink it I don't think it's bad for them yeah it's just like wait what you're an adult like right you know I mean? like oh it, you want to drink coffee huh? yeah yeah so that w- that took some getting used to for me yeah so I'm just picturing your parents reaction to yeah that. and I think by that point I'd been like the coffee shop culture was big at that point I'd been going to the I had been having coffee but I hadn't necessarily been like a every morning cup of coffee person until after that England trip yeah. Um, so that was my, and I probably have not missed a day since. <laughs> that's that's something. Well, mine is a my teenage beverage of choice is a, a strict departure from okay. that. I was really into Sunny D. Oh yeah, Sunny, Sunny D Delight. Was good. Yeah. I forgot about Sunny Delight. It was so. I mean, looking back, it was so gross, but it's like perfectly created for the the teen palate. Oh yeah. I would have like loved it. I think when I had it, I sweet, loved it. Sickly sweet. Yes. And tangy and all those things. Yes. I remember like um, when I detasseled corn, which we talked yes. about in another oh, episode yes. once. Listeners, um, pa- okay, I would pause, Megan. Listeners, yeah. if you have not heard the episode, it's actually one where we interview each other. So it's a little like this. And yeah. it's called the one where Megan and Sarah interview each other. And we talk about our first jobs. And we oh, received. That, is that what it was called? <laughs> well, exactly. yeah, it was called Megan and Sarah interview each other. You can go search it up. And. Um, we got more emails after that episode than we've ever gotten on any topic. And it was about <laughs> Megan detasseling corn in Michigan as a teenager. Okay. Continue. Yes. So I would bring a huge jug of Sunny D. Well, the reason this is on my mind, cause I had kind of forgotten about Sunny Delight. I don't, I haven't thought about it. I haven't, Me too. I haven't, I haven't had any in 
probably 25 years. Um, I was at a Mexican restaurant a couple of weeks ago and I was sitting up at the bar with Jenna and my brother and I ordered a margarita and I look over and the girl's making the margarita and she puts in the mix and she puts in the tequila and all that. And then I'm like, what is she, what is she doing? Is she putting sunny delight? Oh my gosh. <laughs> in the margarita. And Jenna's like, no. And I said, Jenna, look at that jug. That is a sunny delight jug. I have never forgotten the shape. Yeah. I've never I can forgotten the it. cap. And so she brings it over and all I could taste was Sunny D. I couldn't drink it. I mean, it was really sweet to begin with. And I haven't been drinking a lot of sugary drinks lately. Right. So it was really hard. But like, even had it not been, it wasn't just sweet. It was that tang. Right. Like it tasted like tang. Yes. Like it was just this really, uh, I just was floored. But apparently people love it because people rave about these margaritas. And I just, I couldn't do it. I had to give it, I gave it to Jenna. Interesting. So. Yeah, I I yeah. definitely would have loved the Sunny D. I just don't remember having it a lot, but that would have been right up my alley because I loved citrus. I liked orange juice as a kid. That was yummy. I'm sure well, I'm pretty now. sure they also tried to almost like market it like a vitamin D drink. <laughs> yeah. Or like like some kind of, oh no, it was Sunny Delight. Like they, they tried to market it like it like it was, new, like it had nutrients, maybe yeah. vitamin C. And I remember that too, like the, the label yeah. made it look all healthy and stuff. You didn't yep. need that. You lived in California. You already had not. the sun. And... But I do remember commercials and stuff. It's all coming yeah. back. Remember, it would always be like a kid would walk in yep. and like pull yes. the thing out of the fridge yes. and then guzzle it. I, yes, I can. I mean, like, and that and YooHoo. Now the YooHoo yes. commercials are also coming back. But I didn't know. Oh, another really one. Like you might be YooHoo. too. You're probably too young for this. But do you remember Burples? No, not at all. Okay. So Burples were like these plastic accordion like jars where they would like squish down like an accordion. Okay. And then you would buy it and then you would boop, 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 boop. you would okay. open it and then you'd fill it with water and it already had like a powder inside. Oh, my. So, yeah, it was disgusting. But anyway, that just made me think of that. But, yeah, so it was all along those. It was in that ilk of okay. preteen drinks. OK. All right. Moving on. College young adult. And by that, I'm going to say 18 to 22 to 23. OK. Um, I will mention a few specific memories. I don't know that I had one go to, but I'll mention okay. a few specific things. One, I know you're going to talk about Mountain Dew, right? Yes. Okay. But was there, was yours Diet Mountain Dew? Am I stealing no. it? No. Okay. Yuck. So Diet Mountain Dew is pretty much the most disgusting thing in the entire world. It sounds disgusting. It's horrible, but it has a, I almost swore we're doing the more <gasps> than mom. And I almost just. Just almost, I heard you. You almost went there. So you guys, you know, Megan it has and I, a bunch. We don't. We we keep it really clean on this show on purpose, and we will continue to. But outside the show, anyway. Well, you're you're in a different environment right I now. I am. It's I'm easy. In my yeah. Freaking minivan. Um. <laughs> so, Diet Mountain Dew has a lot of caffeine and no calories, and so. I occasionally would put that Allison and I, you've met my college roommate, Allison and I would buy it and put it in our little dorm fridge. And that would be like, I don't know what would help us stay up and study and not have calories. It's so disgusting. Thankfully, yeah. thankfully, I don't think that became like a real, like real dependency. It was just like a tool. It was like having yeah. no-dos or like, yeah, no, you know, yeah. the coffee was gross and you had to go find it somewhere. So Diet Mountain yep. Dew in the dorm fridge, I do remember. Um, yep. I do like a Gatorade when I'm hungover or if I am truly uh, dehydrated. So I was a dancer. So both like when I needed Gatorade for the, the healthy reasons and the less healthy reasons, I like a yellow, like the original. Oh, me too. Know. Original yellow. Yeah. That's I also like flavor. orange going back to my citrus mm. orange theme. Um, but I don't get it, into the blues and purples though. No, me That's neither. Just, yeah, and no. I really only like a Gatorade when I really need a Gatorade. It's really hot. I'm really dehydrated yes. or I'm sick or you hungover. You can tell when you need it. It's like you when can. you taste it, you're like, it tastes weird, but my body wants this. Yeah. And really cold. Um, yeah. so I, I do have memories of like a good Gatorade hitting the spot when I needed it hungover or whatever. And then college, um, again, I wasn't a soda drinker. Um, are we talking about um, adult beverages yet? No, not yet. Not yet? Not okay. Yet, so no. I'm not 21 yet in this story. Nope. Um, so then I'm just going to go again with coffee and I will mention Einstein's Einstein Brothers Bagels across the street from South Campus Northwestern in Evanston um, had great I've been coffee. To that Einstein. Yeah. I love Einstein's coffee and it was super, super hot and really strong and that just would have been my go to for morning coffee. All right. Well, now and and yeah, I'm just going to throw out there that Mountain Dew was my fuel of choice from to from like 18 to 25. 
Okay. I finally had to kick the habit because it was just ridiculous. And I would get to the point where it was like 1030 AM and I want to go to the gas station to get more because I felt tired already. So that was when I realized <laughs> it was time to give it up. And I have not, I have not drank. Now that is so much caffeine. Years. Did you, do you remember having a physical reaction to that much caffeine? Oh, and I say this delicious. as a coffee drinker. No, it was, it, I could feel it getting into my blood. Yeah. I swear I would have this visceral like reaction this the mix of the sugar and the dye and the caffeine all at once it was just like i mean i feel like it was like cocaine or something i mean it just made me but did it ever make you feel bad like i i am a caffeine drinker but i have a very like once it's too much it's a really bad feeling when it stopped making me feel bad is when i knew i had a problem right <laughs> like when i couldn't get enough wow so i okay. stopped i totally gave it up um but um that that's a good segue into the more grown-up drinks. We're going to shift to grown-up okay. drinks now. And I'm going to ask you, what was your first alcoholic drink of choice? Okay. So not the first one you ever had, but like, <laughs> what was your go-to when you were first drinking the booze? I'm trying to think, okay, do you mean out at an establishment where I was allowed to go? Or are we still where we're mixing drinks in friends' houses and we're not allowed Let's to go, go to bars? Let's go with that. Let's go with that because the my next question will be the other one. So okay. the, when you're first like, you know, mixing and uh, you're just taking kind of what you can get. Right. And you probably are broke. Right. Um, so if I had mixed what I wanted, um, probably a vodka tonic. Okay. It's kind of boring. Um, but I'm just having this flood of memories that I'm pretty sure there was a vodka Sunny D episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now this yep. is all coming full circle, and it's real yeah. fuzzy. Um, so vodka is my preferred hard liquor, and then the better, the the older I got, the more refined the mixers, I guess. But I always was a tonic person as opposed to a club soda or yeah anything else. A tonic has like a more bitter flavor, right? It's got yes, like it is. It has more, a little. Yeah. It has a little bite to it, and I don't love. Um, I don't love carbonation in general. You and I, I think, are both like that. So it's got to be the right kind of carbonation something right. about tonic is a very fresh um and yeah has a little bite to it so i'm gonna go vodka tonic so my first was miller light <laughs> and i don't even i think i fell into that by accident i'm not gonna say that was purposefully done um i also there was these down home punches that were i believe yes. uh jack daniels right they were jack daniels yes, yes in the little and mini they, bottles yep four four in a pack that was allison all she was all over that she arrived at college knowing with, about those already they they were like a malt liquor yes and they had mm-hmm. like, like flavors a hard, and like a hard yeah. cider but not a cider like a, yes, right. it was a hard malt liquor yeah there was we, like a lynchburg lemonade yep. and there was oh, like yes. a, a orange one mm-hmm. that was some kind of punch i can't remember what that one yep. actually maybe that was down home punch maybe the, the name of it might have been different something coolers i don't remember i never got into like the real real sugary girly coolers like even zima? for me those uh well no zima was like i came of age in the era of zima I thought it was gross, but I mean, like, like Bartles and James. Oh, like okay. the coolers. You know what I mean? Like the ones that were like Kool-Aid. Yeah. They like, were super sweet. Yeah. yeah. I never, I just, that was even for me, that was too sweet right from the get go. So, okay. Then that leads into my next question for you, which is what was your first like real grown up drink? So now you're able to go to the bar and buy your own drinks and maybe you have a little jingle because you have a job and you can order whatever you want. What for you? What was your drink? Well, I'm going to be boring and say Stick cosmopolitan because okay. it was that era i yeah. turned 21 in 2001 when sex in the city was at the height yeah. of its and i lived in the city and um i do i still love a good cosmopolitan and now if i order one it feels like i'm stuck in the early 2000s like i almost feel embarrassed about it but i really love a good cosmo a really well made one um i also i worked at a bar in my early 20s and got super into this is I'm cracking up at how the through line of citrus and orange juice is really just <laughs> like I never thought about it. So absolute Mandarin and Sprite, which if I had today would be so gross because Sprite is too sweet. But yeah. that was another and I would order that at the bar where I worked. It wasn't a fancy drink by any means, but it was it was me like figuring out really what I liked. And it like felt a little different than just, you know, a vodka. Yeah. Tonic. Okay. So for me, um, I think my, I think when I first started going to the, you know, bar and was able to order drinks, I think I was, that was when I started drinking Corona. Mm -hmm. Um, but then pretty quickly thereafter, I decided to start drinking and I almost can't get these words out without gagging. (laughs) I drank amaretto sours. 
Okay. Which are, they are so sweet. Yeah. And so sour. Yeah. I mean, I like a good whiskey sour, but like I could have maybe now a few sips because they yeah. are very sweet and yeah. sour. But an amaretto sour is like that if you dumped a bunch of like mandarin cherry. Right, 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 right. You're not mandarin cherry. Um, Arachino cherry juice right. in it. It's super, super sweet. So that was my very first grown up drink. I think I drank that when I, and, and now mind you, I was having kids by the time I was 20. So right. I didn't really start going to bars until I was like 24 mm-hmm. because I didn't leave my house really. Right. So, um, and that's about when I, when I was 24, 25, I was calming <laughs> down a little. <laughs> right. And I would go out, you know, I'd go out to restaurants and stuff and sometimes I'd have a beer, but I would be with my kids and I just wasn't really yeah. like, I wasn't thinking strategically about what beverage I was going to get. It was like, Oh, here I am. I I'm at Chili's. Right. Sure. I'll have a Corona. Um, so Amaretto sours were my drink for like a year. And then one day I think I was like, this is gross. I don't want this anymore. Yeah. And so I switched. I, that was when I started drinking wine. And at first I was totally like a white wine drinker. I drank, um, uh, Chardonnay first. Mm-hmm. And then I think I switched to Pinot Grigio. And then at some point I went, I think I went Sauvignon Blanc and I, okay. So I lived by a CVS and they carried wine mm-hmm. and down at the end of the wine rack, there was a, um, like a clearance wine thing. <laughs> Like an end cap? CVS clearance wine for the win. Yeah, I know. Hey, I, at this point, I was like broke and single hey. and like had to go home and like take care of my kids and stuff. So I bought a bottle for four ninety six. I don't know why I remember this so clearly. And it was a Shiraz. Mm. And I brought it home and I drank it. And I was, was like, it Yellowtail? No, was it? Okay. it was some other brand that I've never heard of again or don't remember. And I drank it and I thought, well, this is interesting. This is so totally different. And I only was able to drink like a quarter of the glass. But then I thought, oh, I like this. I like I like how peppery it is and I like how mm-hmm. bold it is. And then after that, I think red wine was just my thing after that. Like I just I liked that it was challenge. It like challenged me, I right. guess. And it wasn't in uh, the thing I love about red wine now. So that's been my drink now for 15 years. Um, My, you know, alcoholic drink is that. It's never the same. Like it's never, I never exactly know what I'm going to get from glass to glass, even if it's the same, I've had the same brand over and over. So I like that. And I I forgot, like I just jumped ahead because I was going to ask you about like when you decided you liked wine and then kind of tell me about your wine flavor profile. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to back up a second because I'm realizing, okay, since we've been talking about our drinking years and even like, I mean, I, you know, started drinking kind of in college or right before college, I wasn't like way earlier than that but before 21 but i'm always i've always been really really circumstantial like it, the setting i'm in and the people i'm with and what i'm doing highly influences my alcoholic beverage of choice and in a fun way though like i i love a good beer like a draft beer at a bar that has really good beer is always especially at like at lunch or like with bar food i will always get like a red ale or a brown ale if I'm at a football game, I will drink Bud Light. Like if I, right. so I, I feel like I've been saying that I drink vodka tonic and vodka Sunny Delight. And, but really like <laughs> next time I'm at your I, house, I am going to request a vodka Sunny Delight. Oh my gosh. Or, <laughs> or side note, we used to do vodka and Hawaiian punch from the vending machine when it was too cold to leave the dorms. Like we'd have a handle of vodka and there was Hawaiian punch from the vending machine. Oh <laughs> gosh. Great. Okay. But I feel like it's, been seeming like all I do is mixed drinks but actually like still to this day whether I am in the mood for beer wine a mixed drink a martini is completely dependent on where I am which is funny because that doesn't seem like that would be my personality you would think I would have a go-to and I'd always stick to it but I really like kind of matching the drink to what I'm doing so I like so I guess back to your wine question um my my Every night, like home on a weeknight, I'm going to watch a show with my husband on the couch um, is a glass of wine, um, usually white, but we go through phases of red too. Um, my dad is a red wine collector and we end up with some really nice red wine because of that. And it's great. I have to- been the benefactor. Yeah. I have been mm-hmm. the beneficiary yes, yeah. of that. So, that so nice um, I like white and I like red. I do get headaches really bad if I have more than like a glass of red, which is a bummer because it's not like I am, it's not like I go over the top and have a bottle and a half. I can have just a glass and a half or two glasses of red and get a pretty bad headache. So I love red wine, but I'm, I, it's like, has to be sprinkled throughout and Mm. not too much at once. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, it's highly dependent on where I am and who I'm with. So I, I love beer. I love 
white wine. I love red wine. I love cocktails, mixed drinks, but I don't really branch out much beyond vodka. I can I can do a gin cocktail or maybe a whiskey cocktail if they're well made and it's something really interesting, but I yeah. do not do tequila. And everyone will say, oh, I but love really... tequila. I know. And everyone will say, well, you can't taste the tequila in this margarita. And I'm like, I can because I don't like tequila. So it tastes like yeah. tequila to me. Tequila to me. I, I don't, I'm not a huge well, I think vodka is very dangerous. To me, it doesn't taste like anything, and that's problematic because right. I love beverages. And so to me, that it's just like, whoa, this is just this yummy beverage, and right. I don't taste that there's alcohol in it, and so nothing's triggering me to go, hey, stop. Um, tequila, I just think a good, smooth tequila is really yummy. And But I'm not a big booze person. I'm not like a big spirits person. Right. Um, but I but I do like a good tequila. But I have- But I also really like wine. Have you gotten into like any in the last few years that you have gone to more like, you know, you go out in the city and you go to yeah. more places. Have you gotten gotten in on any like trendier cocktail crazes like the Moscow Mule, like any of I'm the... not a big Moscow. I'll have one Moscow Mule. I did really get into gimlets for a while. It's okay. kind of an old fashioned. I like drink. gimlets because I um, love they're lime. delicious love and I've citrus. had them made different ways. Sometimes they're sweeter. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're not sweet. I like them a little bit sweet, but not very. And they're very fresh. I just think yes. they're so fresh and refreshing yes. and good. Um, I've had some that I thought were interesting, but I didn't want to finish. I want to say like, a, um, oh, I've had, there's this one that's got whiskey in it and bitters and I, I can't, it's got a super, it's an old fashioned, like yeah. it's not an old fashioned, but it's like an old fashioned right. drink. Right. And I no, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, yeah, I'll go out and have one. But honestly, at the end of the night, I like wine. I, I know it. I yeah. understand so you it. Just stick with it. I know it's effects. Like I just, I feel like I have, a lot of control over it. Yeah. Um, and I do, I feel like every time I drink a, a mixed drink, I don't know exactly what I'm getting. So I feel like now I have two questions for you. Are you done with your questions? I'm not. Well, I, I, I am, but I think, don't you have to go pick up your kids in a second? Are we in running two out minutes. of time? We have two, in minutes. two minutes. Okay. Cause I have one last question. Okay. But you, you can go. ask, you ask yours. Cause I've been peppering you with questions. Well, I was going to ask, ask if you're, if you're boozing in the morning, what's your go-to day or morning drink? That sounds so terrible, but you know what <laughs> I mean. It did sound pretty terrible, you but You know okay. what I mean, like a brunch. <laughs> like a, a oh, oh, in a brunch, yeah. a mimosa. Okay. I'm not a bloodies drinker. Yeah, I know. So, well, I I was just wondering because this morning at work I was at a meeting and this morning we were at work talking. You were... <laughs> I was they kept no, I wasn't drinking at work, but my boss kept saying we're gonna have a, a nine o'clock meeting. We're gonna have wine at nine, and I was like. Honestly, hey, I'm an equal opportunity wine drinker, but 1130 is kind of the earliest I could see myself going there. And even that's a stretch. Um, But yeah, mimosas for sure. Or Bellinis or one of those. I am not. I don't like mimosas because I don't like what champagne does to me. And um, I just, yeah, but I love a good Bloody Mary. So you and I. Well, I like the bubbles and I could have like two tops and then 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 it's too sweet and it's too much. Yeah. Um, so I'm a Bloody Mary for my answer for that. And then my last question, which is something I've never landed on, is do you have a good um, like nightcap drink? Like if it's really late and it's something you just want to sip on, I guess you would just have another glass of red wine. Huh? I would have another glass of wine. I'm not See, a big. Every I've now and then wanted like, like an like a <sighs> like a really nice nightcap that I liked. And I've tried a bunch and yeah. I don't like any of them. The The lesson is I should probably just go to bed if, if I can't. Probably. And, and there there have been times when I've but it's been cold or I've been sick and I've had like a hot toddy and really liked it. But I would do that, you know, once a year. Right. I'd, it wouldn't be something that I would right. do regularly. Yeah. Okay. I have to ask, I know you have like one minute before no, you have to fine. like, you know, stop talking about booze and go get your kids in the parking lot. Um, <laughs> in the parking lot. But I just have to ask because everyone knows we love LaCroix. Oh, yeah. This is the lightning round. Okay. The LaCroix lightning round. What is the question? What was the first flavor? Oh, okay. I was like, what is the question? The first flavor that existed that you in liked. LaCroix? Oh, that I no, liked. That you liked. I'm not quizzing you. What was the first one you liked? Uh, blackberry cucumber in the skinny can. Oh, wow. That's very specific. Mine was um, pamplemousse. Grapefruit. Okay. I love, what's that's your still go-to... my favorite. Okay. It's pretty good. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. What's your go-to LaCroix flavor now? I think grapefruit. Example, mousse. Yep. And mine is coconut. But sometimes lime because lime is just like an everyday pleaser. Yeah. Lime is just like, it almost doesn't seem like a LaCroix. Like it's just No, there. it just seems like it's kind but of But I like wind. it. I had a mango and we've talked about uh, apricot. Apricot is surprisingly yes. delicious. It is very delicious. Okay. Do you like in general or, and also specific to LaCroix, do you like your drinks room temperature, cold or icy cold? I'm going to say cold. I don't like ice in drinks like I, if I have water a glass of water it's going to be cold chilled water but not with not with ice cubes 
So I like a lot of room temperature drinks, and I will argue that LaCroix is a totally different animal when drunk room temperature. You prefer so LaCroix I, room temperature? I don't prefer it. I'm just saying it's different. If it's you're looking different. for a different LaCroix experience, it's mellower, and the flavor is comes out more. Oh. I like my LaCroix really cold. Like, really cold from a can feels feels right there. But maybe I'll well, have to try it. Should we wrap this up on LaCroix? We should wrap LaCroix? this up so you can get your children. <laughs> Actually, I kind of want a LaCroix now. Oh, this has been really fun. Okay, so how do people find this episode? They just go to themomhour.com. Yep. And search for beverages. Yep, it'll be it'll be there. It's right in your feed with the rest of our episodes. And then um, every Tuesday, we are back with a much more organized approach to solving all of your parenting challenges in life. Yeah, but these are that really we try at least. <laughs> so, all right, this was thanks fun. for listening. Thanks, you guys. and we always want to hear from you guys about what what you want to hear. For yeah, these, these topics because these are fun for us. But hey, we're just winging it every time. So send us an email at hello at themomhour.com. See you next time. 